because the pelvic is crooked. So, the, so any movement, the movement of the vertebral colon determines the movement of the leg. So when you see an abnormality on the legs, it comes from the back. It could be lateral bending, it could be rotation, it could be dorsoventral, they all are in one. <coughs> so that's why the source of the problem is always the back. To work his back, you have to, you have the, the canter and the trot are going to work better. <coughs> At the walk, the legs act like a lever. Yeah, like that, it's a lever. You push the body far away. No. The legs is outside. Say the great trochanter is there, the hip joint is there, therefore the glute goes there, like that. Therefore, when he push with the left arm leg, the force goes like that. In a spine, oblique. So the muscles situated on the right side of the back have to counteract the oblique force. Right? So if the left arm leg push and the right side of my back don't resist, I'm going to do that. And that, not very effective. Now, to have the push of my left leg become in forward movement, I have to resist with the muscle situated on the right side of the spine the push on the left leg, and then I move forward. Therefore, there is always contraction, push, and compensation. The muscles who compensate are on the outside of the vertebral column, on the outside of the band. They become longer and they contract. That's called eccentric contraction. Very powerful. Therefore, the work demands a lot of compensation. Very good, but very hard. Okay. The trot different because the trot acts like a spring. Bon. Therefore, the force you come on the spine is not so oblique. Therefore, the compensation is a little bit less. The counter is different. The legs act both as a lever and a spring. Therefore, the compensation of the spine is different. On the top of that, they are bent. So we have three gates. We are going to have three different effects on the vertebral column. The one with the stronger, the more difficult, it's a walk. Yeah, you see, and we will sing the opposite. That's a walk. So therefore, for him, what I will do, <coughs> I will start by the trot and the canter. And then the walk. Yeah, the opposite. Okay. How we are going to do that? The counter is going to interest us. Because his left lead, band left, right lead, band right. Therefore, if we do left, right, left, right, we do a pretty good gymnastic. Okay? So, we are going to do a, a, a succession of departures. Okay? So, we are going to start at the walk on shoulder in left. As soon as he bends a little, we are going to do two strides on the diagonal, and then we are going to ask left leg counter. Okay? Straight. Two strides on the diagonal. Yeah, it's because. Yeah, you could pick up the counter from the, from the shouldering. <coughs> you are there. Therefore, you could pick up the counter. What happens if you do it? directly for the shoulder in, they tend to shift to the right. Yeah. Okay. So it's better if from the shoulder in you go straight, one, two, counter. At the end of the diagonal, transition trot. Okay? Then, <coughs> what we did yesterday, so down the trot, yeah. And when the trot feels good, so one circle, if you have two or two. And when the trot feels nice, sit the trot. Shoulder in walk. Okay. Diagonal, right lead counter. I, I feel like you're asking a third grader to do high school algebra. <laughs> <laughs> PhD. PhD. <laughs> PhD. <laughs> to get it right. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
if we are going to miss, we are going to screw. <laughs> no problem. Okay, yeah. No problem. Error are good. Error is the way we learn. No problem. Yeah. But we are going to repeat this combination of movement because it's going to work the horse in every angle. Yeah. It's a very interesting combination and, and, of, of movement. And what it's doing. But yeah. the band, the band, the balance, the shouldering prepare the horse for the counter. The counter in balance is going to create more longitudinal flexion plus a little bit of lateral bending. The transition trot and immediately the pinion jog is going to ask him to control the momentum of the counter in, with a back to go back on a more organized trot. As soon as he will control the balance from his back, we push that further. Okay, now trot walk. Balance more. As soon as he walk, shoulder in. Prepare for the next counter, and so on. You see? So we do a combination of things, which is going to help him. So don't worry, it looks like complicated, but once you do it, it's not, it's not a big deal. Shoulder in, right, right, and then left. Yeah, right or left, the one you prefer. And then the shoulder in, prepare for the counter. Okay, so theoretically, you should pick up the counter from the shoulder in. That where theory don't work, because if you do it from the shoulder in, you will likely shift. So you put on the diagonal, <coughs> but you don't wait too long, and then you pick up the counter. Okay? <coughs> You go straight, you keep the pole to the right, you open the, your own chest, you open your own body, you act like you take a deep breath, you change the tone of your body, and you collect the walk. Yeah, slow the walk with the pole to the right. Yeah, you slow the walk more, good, like that. Well, now, as soon as you slow the walk, you turn your pelvic to the right to push the shoulder to the right, but you keep his group on the rail. So go on the rail, it's much easier. Slow the walk, place the pole to the right, slow the walk, there. Now turn your pelvic to the right, your pelvic, your back, your shoulder, to push, to bend the horse to the right. He bend between your thighs. That where the vertebral column bend. Therefore, if you turn your pelvic to the right, keeping your body in balance above the seat bone, you will bend the thoracic spine to the right. Yeah. So, go straight, last the pole right, don't move your hand too much. The, the neck, all the staff to place the neck are just, they are just il an illusion. It's just postural. It does not have any effect on the mechanic of the vertebral column. So you slow, yeah, there. You slow the movement with your back. The horse is going to bend around your right leg. Therefore, your left leg is a little bit back, not too much. And then on the next side, on the other side of the ring, you are going to place your pelvic toward me. So slow the walk. Right your body, slow the walk. The pole is right, slow, there. Now face me. Place your pelvic here, face me, here, there, here. Face me, to the right. Not with your head, with your pelvic. Come on, it's facing. Now, you stop. I tell you, face me. Okay. So you do that. <laughs> you look at me. Oh, I'm that enough. Then keep your shoulder and your back and your pelvic same. Don't twist your spine. Okay. Now turn in one piece. Face me. There. That's too much. Your shoulder are more. Yeah. You are, first you are on the left side. Bon. Put you equal on both side. Bon. There. Well, now turn the pelvic and the chest toward me. There. Well, then you feel your left thigh. <coughs> Good pressure on the saddle. 
which if he don't respond, you can increase, not by turning more, but by putting more tone on the left side of your body. Okay? So face me here, well, and then decide from on the left side of your spine, plus your upper thigh, put more pressure. There. Okay? You don't move, but you put more pressure, and therefore it's going to respond. No. Now, as he responds, he's going to turn the shoulder to the right. Okay? And <clears throat> when he will be in movement. As he turns the shoulder to the right, he might do it too much. Then you keep the same posture, but you resist. Yeah. yeah. You, you channel the horse to be in place between your body. So you go straight, you go on the right. <coughs> yeah. You slow the walk, keep your hand very quiet. Yeah. Placing the neck has no effect. It's really uh, it's just cosmetic stuff. It's just a postural. Postural, they don't live postural, they don't function postural, they function dynamic. Therefore, posture has no effect in motion. So then you place the pole to the right, you slow the movement, like there, very good. Then you turn your pelvic to the right. Your pelvic, your back, your shoulder. Therefore, you turn his shoulder toward the center of the ring. And as you move the shoulder toward the center of the ring, with your right leg, the calf, you put pressure to keep the croup on the rail. So your body, the croup is on the rail. Your body face me. Your hand too, you are here. And then with your right leg, then bend the spine, push the croup. Push the croup, and push the croup, and the shoulder, push, yeah, there. Push the croup, and place the shoulder here. So your hand face me, your body, your hand, back like there, face me. Then bend the spine, push the croup, and face me, yeah, there. He's going to figure, yeah, the croup, and the shoulder, face me, there, face me, face me with the hand, too. face me there. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then slow, and you keep the croup on the right, yeah. Until he put the shoulder inside, yes. The shoulder a little bit more inside. A tiny bit slow, shoulder inside. And then, <coughs> a little bit slower. So you, you put pressure with the calf of the right leg when you engage the right arm leg. And your body face right a little. So your body, your hand face me. Here, and then the right leg. Then bend the neck too much. Yeah, there. Slow. The right leg. The shoulder. Bend the neck less. Yeah, there. There. The shoulder and the right leg. Yeah. Then don't use the hand too much. Then you push. And when he's going to move the shoulder a little bit to the right. Yeah. Now the shoulder, face right. Your pelvic right and your right leg with pressure to put the croup on the rail. And then your pelvic your back, your shoulder, turn his thoracic vertebra to the right. If you bend the neck too much, you go against what you are doing. When you the back, is over, the neck is over bent, you push the shoulder to the left. So that's why you don't succeed, because the neck is too bent. So don't push the shoulder, don't bend the neck. Keep, the, keep him slow, good. <coughs> and then push with the right leg, keep the hand quiet, and both hands face me. Yeah, there, yeah, there, yeah. The shoulder, more, more, right leg, yeah, there, there. Diagonal, right lead counter. Yeah, then go, counter. Oh. Then you take the diagonal, at the counter, and then at the end, diagonal, then you trot, and then circle left, collect the trot, pin your jog. The hand on the base of the neck, slow the trot, slow the trot, yeah, continue until if the neck comes in place, the trot became comfortable. 
to push at the trot and the rein steady. The rein is a little bit shorter. Yeah. And the slow cadence. Tac, tac, tac. Yeah, there. There. Good. Good. And then when the cadence became good with the rein a little bit shorter, you sit the trot and on the long side you stay straight. Sit and walk. And then as you walk, collect the walk, face me, slow the walk, push the croup with the left leg, put the shoulder here, slow, yes, shoulder, yeah, there, shoulder, more, more, yes, like that, yeah. The croup on the rail, the shoulder inside.